you today my third favorite type of case. Um, it's Disney IR. <laughs> what we're going to be talking about is bigger. Something that's been bothering me largely since I was seven years old, which is why do we root for Simba in the Lion King? Like at the end of the day, Madam Speaker, we're going to say outside government today that we hugely support, in both moral terms and practical terms, the assassination of Mufasa and the Lion King. <laughs> assassination and cruel monarchical dictatorship. The second thing I'm going to talk about is why Scar's rule was actually more communitarian and why it was actually a more liberal and democratic state to live in. I mean, ultimately a better state for all animals in the Pride Lands. And the third thing I'm going to talk about is why assassination should be the only method to actually achieve the political transition necessary in this case. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is just like what Mufasa's leadership was actually like. Keep in mind, the film opens with him like some demented Noah calling two of each animal to witness the birth of his child to see their future ruler over which they have no control. What we have thought of Madam Speaker is this is a community where admittedly, according to the king, the minorities don't have rights because they are minorities. There's literally a line that says, they cannot have these things, they are hyenas, and hyenas are not meant to have these things. <laughs> in Zimbabwe or the Sinhalese minority in Sri Lanka, making rules based on uh, based on like the rights of the majority of creatures in the area. We would say that the idea, no thank you, that lions have some sort of special position in the society simply based on their birthright is not a decent or even fair, just way to run a society. We would posit to you that there's no like electoral rights, there's no rights at all in this situation. Because we would say that the uh, heritage passes from father to son. He says, one day this will all be yours and these people can't do shit about it. Madam <laughs> Speaker, I think there is no options for the people in this region. We think it is like ultimately a very cruel and monarchical dictatorship. We think there is a huge minority, the hyenas, who are forced to live in a graveyard with no food and ultimately are given absolutely no political rights or individual rights. They're not even allowed to meaningfully interact with the other animals because they're seen to be dirty and poor. What we would say in this situation, when you are faced with this level of problems, we think it's absolutely morally justifiable to commit assassination. Because there's no layer of recourse. I'll tell you why. So, in this case, these are not different types of humans. They're actually different animals with different needs, different biologies, and different psychologies. In that case, yes, we can discriminate. This is speciesism, not racism. Okay, Madam Speaker, we're going to make a case against speciesism when they all speak the same language and all have the same mental capacity. <laughs> Speaker, what we would say to you is, in this area where there is no recourse, like this is why assassination is morally justifiable. This is like an isolationist culture. Like they're not even aware that there are other societies around. The Pride Lands is the end all and be all of what they're aware of and what they can control, right? So, Madam Speaker, when you see there's absolutely no way to achieve minority rights, we think violent actions like, uh, like assassination or in some cases even terrorism could actually be justified when there's no ability to have any kind of recourse of any other kind. We think when a society is so cruel, when it's squashing rights so consistently, and when it ultimately uh, allows no political or liberal rights at all, we think in this case assassination is morally justifiable. We think the one death of an individual and like bringing lions back down to just being like every other animal in the Pride Lands, we think in this case it actually would be morally justifiable to do this. So I'm going to talk about Scar's rule and why it actually was more humanitarian. Keep in mind the biggest complaint that Simba had when returning to the Pride Lands is that it hasn't fucking rained. Okay. <laughs> How is that Scar's fault? <laughs> Society was functionally much better, right? Like, Madam Speaker, we would say that Mufasa's uh, widow actually maintained some level of power and control and had a place in government as Scar's mistress. What we would <laughs> Madam Speaker, is that she had the opportunity to leave, and all the other lines had the opportunity to leave and seek salt in the jungle, but instead they were allowed place in government and they were allowed place to actually be able to control to some degree how lions felt. Scar's government was actually a reasonable coalition between animals and actually resulted in better results, like, other than weather. It resulted in ultimately a better place for everyone to live on the Pride Lands. We would say that like the lions appear to be enslaved, but really they're just doing work. Like they never had to work before, but now that you see them actually hunting and getting food for themselves and protecting themselves when otherwise they'd give it out to their slave animals, which they control in the future. So we would say Scar's rule is actually a much, much more successful, much better place, and one we would be much happier to support from. Okay, so like if we can show that scavengers are inherently evil, don't you think that would show that there actually are differences between species that should, you know, we should discriminate based on those differences? If they're going to make their case on like these hy the hyenas in the Lion King world are innately evil based on their characteristics as a hyena, that's some seriously racist shit. <laughs>
society was born after scars took control and Simba was cast out, we don't think it's illegitimate to cast Simba out. We think in any transition after some sort of revolution, which we think this was, we think it's perfectly reasonable to send the heir away and cast him out of the society because you worry about returning to the same type of uh, like autocratic rule we saw before. And he was right. Like Simba came back and did impose the same horrific dictatorship that we saw before. So matter of fact, we think you're he's absolutely justified in all the actions he took, and reasonably speaking, this is the better society. So the last thing I want to talk about is why assassination is the only method to achieve the political transition we'd like to see. Because we would say, Madam Speaker, that the cult of personality surrounding Mufasa within like the lions, we would say like the idea that this rule passed from father to son is never going to be broken unless some sort of assassination is taken place and taken out right at the head and make some sort of actual bloody style revolution. We think like a well-armed populace, in this case arms are like buffalo or whatever, will the beast. <laughs> Sometimes this is the only way of achieving actual political transition. Because like, because there's no like actual like strict government, there's no constitution, there's no ability for them to actually make laws in this way. We think the only way to actually defeat this type of rule, this type of autocratic rule, is to actually make a violent action of assassination. So like we say it's morally justified, but this we say the society is better. And because there really is no other way to achieve the type of benefits we see, we think ultimately this is the only decision that Scar could have possibly taken that makes the situation better for everyone. Like, Scar, a lion himself, is standing up for minority rights. This is like if a Sinhalese president supported, to some degree, Tamil rights in Sri Lanka. This doesn't happen, Madam Speaker. We think we should support somebody who is willing to stand up for minority rights, even though it doesn't benefit themselves. We believe at the end of the day, because Scar was willing to take this brave action and a strong action of actually like, engaging in some level of bloody revolution to achieve this political transition, we think this is the only way they could have done it. So Madam Speaker, because we don't believe in sick racism, because we don't believe in autocratic rule, and we think to some degree the society we're presenting is a better one, we beg to propose. Coming back and bringing some food, and the hyenas taking it 
from the lioness to eat themselves. And the lionesses are starving, right? What he's done is given his supporters too much support, and he's not rewarding the established society, right? He's giving the hyenas too much. It also shows, I mean, like the Scar treats even his most loyal supporters, the hyenas, with contempt, right? There's parts where the hyenas like, are actively aggressive towards him. This suggests that he's fomenting unrest, even when he rules in the society, right? He's treating the hyenas badly, and the hyenas resent him for it. There's many times in the movie where he strikes the hyenas and does other bad shit to them. Um, what else does he do that's bad? Also, he like tries to kill a child and murders his brother. I think like when you have a good leader, you need some sort of idea of like of justice and cooperation, right? If Scar can't cooperate because he's already been always been looked down upon as the outsider, he's not going to be a good leader. He's always going to be mistrustful. He's never going to be able to like trust others in order to cooperate in order to form a good society. I mean, being able to trust your subordinates and choosing good subordinates, not based on their loyalty but based on their capabilities and objectively like good morality, is what you want in a leader. Do you believe that the hyenas deserve absolutely no sense of reparations after their years of slavery? <laughs> I don't think there's any evidence in the movie that they were slaves at all, right? They lived in like the bone yard separately. I'll talk about the hyenas in more rebuttal. I think they're bad. Um, <laughs> value stability, right? This is a fragile economy based on like like hunting and gathering in the savannah, right? So what happens, right? Well, there are droughts, as we see in the movie. There are seasonal changes in your supply of food. What this requires in many prides of lions is to move around a bit, to be able to travel together, to move to more kind of bountiful areas. What do we see? The mistake Scar made was not that he like the drought happened, but he didn't move the pride, right? He was too attached to this pride rock, right? He was too attached to the symbol of his brother's rule that he didn't want to leave it. They should have left, and if he were a good leader, he'd be able to kind of coordinate a whole bunch of lions traveling around the dangerous countryside, right? What was required when you're kind of a pre Technological civilization is the ability to adapt to circumstances in order to like convince your people that you need to move to get food somewhere else. Scar is clearly unable to do this. We also think that killing your brother undermines the legitimacy of the whole regime, right? I mean, this is a, this is a situation where a civilization where there's always threats, so there's always food tours and other problems, right? When they're having the idea that they have rules that's legitimate is really important, and just like killing the leader really undermines that. It suggests to the hyenas, for instance, that they should also kill the leader and take over. Um, I'll talk about monarchy a bit later because I want to get to this rebuttal. Okay, so Romeo says it's morally justifiable because lions aren't special and all the animals are the same and blah blah blah, right? I think this is obviously not true. Here's the thing about hyenas, right? Hyenas are not cooperative animals in the same way. They are by their biology and by their nature scavengers, right? They are like blood suckers in some sense. They profit off of the actions of others, right? They wait for another animal to kill something then they get in there and take parts of it, right? This isn't the same sort of like cooperative ethic you see with the lions, who need to cooperate more to protect their young and raise their young, right? So they're actually different kinds of animals entirely. So there's no reason to believe that hyenas will be a good place in the lion civilization because the way, the only way they know how to get food is to take what others have given them, right? Whereas lions are proactive, right? They're good citizens. They go out and kill that little on their own instead of waiting for someone else to do it. So there actually are differences that make the lions bad citizens. Romeo. So opposition is okay with systematic discrimination as long as it's because they eat something that we don't find good. So we discriminate against animals all the time because they're different than us. They're different species than us. I think that's okay, right? We domesticate dogs and horses even when we treat them well, right? I think the relationship between, for example, lions and hyenas is more like the relationship between us and dogs, right? We don't like let them run our society. We treat them nicely on the outskirts of it, right? This isn't like different spe like different ideas of the same species. They're actually highly different animals with different biologies, with different brains that produce different psychologies. Cooperation isn't necessarily possible. So then he says minority rights sometimes justify violence. I say actually they don't, right? I think you could do what Gandhi did and be non-violent in your opposition. That actually works sometimes, right? Maybe like the reliance seemed perfectly reasonable, certainly Mustafa was, even if Scar isn't. Maybe the hyenas would have made reasonable demands and said, you know, let's have like some area that would have been better instead of like bailing on this guy who's just going to kill him. We think that's better, right? We think non-violence is proven to work in the human world. There's no reason why it can work in the animal world too, maybe. Um, Romeo says it has a rain. Right? But I already told you the problem wasn't that it rained, but that Mustafa was unwilling to travel because he wasn't confident enough of Alamir himself. Right? What they should have done is move to somewhere with more resources. Romeo says, now the lions had to contribute. This isn't true. They were contributing before. The lionesses were the ones who went and hunted and brought back the food for the other lionesses and their children. Right? What we see in the movie in Scar's Rule is everybody living in a really shitty place with no food, and the hyenas take whatever the lionesses bring back. That ain't just. The lions are still doing work. And then he says hyenas are okay, um, and they, but I mean, I told you why they're not, and also they can create their own hyena society if they want. Why do they have to freeload off the lion society? That's not fair. We oppose.
rebuild Romeo's and Juliet's family as far as they weren't adequately working. Um, I'm going to bring forward a new point: reparation for kindness. We're going to compare this situation in the Lion King to the situation of natives in Canada. We're going to say that like it's only fair that we give these hyenas benefits, which makes sense when they actually get to the lionesses and stuff like that. We're going to say that like we need to provide them that benefits because we need to live in a graveyard. We literally casted them out of society and told them sleep in some elephant bones, right? Like, they've been there a long time. Like, they actually 
the history there. It's kind of the, they're staked in this like pride land. They've actually been there a really long time. Um, so we say that like there's no evidence of Mustafa moving the tribe either. Like just because like the rain is like a metaphor for like unhappiness or whatever. But we say like that's not his problem. Um, <laughs> so what did Romeo talk about today? He talked about how like the death of Mustafa was morally justified because we need to stop a cruel monarchy from happening. And if the only way that they can do that is through another lion and actually uh, allowing people to raise up and become uh, a democracy. Surprise. Then that's a good thing. We're gonna say like every animal in the pride lands should have uh, should have rights. And that we need to uh, we need to recognize that as a state in this like as a pillar of this case, that minority rights need to be protected regardless of their status, what they eat, what they smell like, we don't care. Um, then you talk about how the scars rules actually now like compared to Mustafa's and how uh, like, just because the land went to shit, it's not really a problem. He actually had a much happier, uh, people working, like, hyenas actually had rights, he vote was an army, we say, like, all those things are inherently good if you want to, uh, like, a democracy eventually. Uh, and then you talk about how, like, the assassination was the only way to uh, have this political shift happen. You would say, racist. Yeah. can't. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sambo would have ultimately ascended king. There's no other outcome that could have come if he did assassinate him. So we're going to say that like, these decisions have all been made and justified, and the fact that Simba came back is actually a bad thing in our eyes. And uh, we think that uh, for all these reasons, like because uh, Mustafa was not a benevolent leader, or because Scar actually gave people a chance to cover it, that this case must stand. Thank you. Nelson Mandela. We would say that Scar is far more like Napoleon in Animal Farm, right? And the dogs in the Animal Farm are far closer to the hyenas in the Lion King. So I'm going to be talking about a lot about why this minority rights issue is just plain wrong, but that falls on our side. But how am I going to do that? I'm going to look at everything we heard from the last speaker. I'm going to look at what my partner said. I'm going to look at the responses we heard. You get that. Okay. So what did my partner bring up? He brought forward this first argument about Mustafa being a good leader, right? And then we hear the classic argument from side opposition, but he was oppressing the hyenas, okay, based on like religious grounds. I think my partner's you know, analysis about species discrimination is legitimate, still stands, that different species with different psychologies and biologies are kind of incompatible to like living together and being equal. So I think that stands. She also responded to like this idea of him teaching his kid to be a good leader, that, you know, sure, that's fine, but only Simba benefits here. Well, there's actually a really important point to be made here about royal succession. There's a really good reason that it works. It's because you have, you know, a, a father telling his son how to be a good king, right? Instructing him on all the things that he must do, his duties, the philosophy he needs to have. You know, we'd say that this kind of royal succession, the way that works, is actually really good. We that him grooming with his son creates stability and creates good leadership. So this, so I think that still stands. This next idea about uh, Scar just being a bad guy. Um, so, like, she responded to most of the analysis about, you know, giving too much to the hyenas as, like, reparations. Again, reparations were not made to the hyenas, right? They became this privileged overclass who could do whatever they want because they were, you know, the equivalent of Hitler's thugs, Stalin's thugs. That's who the hyenas are, not this, like, uh, oppressed underclass that was raised up. Um, we'd say here on this side that fratricide and infanticide are bad. You know, just generally, <laughs> we'd say those things are bad, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, we'd say that like, there's never just a justification for assassination, that there are other ways to deal with it. I think my partner dealt with those, so I think that like, he being a bad guy still stands. Uh, as well, we'd say that he fomented a lot of unrest by doing this, uh, and that he put it back in different ways. Finally, this last idea, I think it's the one that really stands about fragile economy and stability. So she responded to like the idea that they should have moved and the fact that they didn't, as they've got a lot of history there. They should just stay. We think Mustafa would have moved the tribe. We think Mustafa was far more interested in like feeding his people than the cult of his own personality, right? Sure, it looks badass when you're on top of Pride Rock talking to everybody, but that doesn't matter. What matters more is feeding your people. Scar cares more about his own cult of personality than the people he's trying to feed. Despite that, more importantly, no thank you, killing the leader is a good way to foment unrest. So, all of my partner's reputations still stand. We heard 
absolutely no direct reconstruction. I'm going to go through what we heard from the first speaker. Uh, before I do that, however, I'd just like to look at this last instructive argument about reparations. I think I've already dealt with it. But I'm going to deal with it in two parts, right? So what we have to realize is that Scar is not Nelson Mandela. What he's effectively done is raised up this class of, like, thugs, the hyenas, who are, in, in essence, more equal than the rest of the animals in the pride land. They are given special treatment, they are given special privileges, and they are effectively used to oppress the other animals on the pride land. More importantly, we can test this whole notion that, like, minority rights weren't respected in Mustafa's pride lands. Why? Because all the animals are really happy, right? And more importantly, we'd say that, like, minority rights aren't being respected in Scar's world either. That all you've done is raise the hyenas up. We'd say that even if we accept that there was some, like, minority oppression in Mustafa's uh, world, that there's less, that there's more of it going on now, and you've only been privileged then. So this reparations idea falls. So for this first idea from Romy about monarchy, right, and uh, that the lions shouldn't have special privileges, and that violent actions are justified when you've got to take down a vicious dictatorship. Okay, so we can test this on face value. We don't think there was a vicious dictatorship going on. We think there was a really solid monarchy going <coughs> down, and we liked it, right? We think that everyone was happy, and everybody was doing really well. Um, we say that you don't need to respond to this kind of thing by violence. We look at Gandhi in India. My partner talked about that. And again, we heard no response from uh, side opposition. Sure. Okay, the only other race that's very like frequently featured is hyenas, and they are miserable. So there's only one race that's actually succeeding visibly in this movie. So like. Fair enough, but we see absolutely no examples of any other species that is actually oppressed, right? Unless that we see elephants, you know, living in some in terrible conditions, right? We don't see hippopotami living in terrible conditions either. And the reason this is is because they aren't. If it were relevant to the story, it would be in there, right? The only group that's being oppressed, <laughs> I quote, the only group that's being oppressed are the hyenas. And I think my partner dealt with this when he talks about, you know, species discrimination, that they are kind of evil and jerks, right? <laughs> Um, so we think that's just a kind of ridiculous notion. Again, we heard no uh, reconstruction of this. Uh, the next idea about Scar's rule that society was functioning better. Okay, clearly it wasn't, right? Like, Scar's kind of a dicky about it. He's got this obsession with himself, and he wants to be badass standing in front of Tribe Rock and talking to his people. He cares far more about his own personality and the cult surrounding his personality than he does about his actual people and getting them fed. Um, more importantly, we'd actually say that there's a benefit to, you know, raising your children differently when you're in a royal family, right? So, like, I am born to raise Scar because he's not, like, the firstborn to be an asshole, to be, like, totally unscrupulous, so that if something bad happens and, like, someone comes from outside the Pride Lands to attack us, we have someone who's totally unscrupulous who can take them down, right? We say that that's actually the way that royal families work. You train one kid to be a great kid. You train the other to, you know, not be such a good king and be an unscrupulous and be really nasty. We think Scar actually served a really important place in Mustafa's uh, pride lands because he can be an enforcer and he can, you know, fight bad people. Um, yeah, uh, more importantly, he's just a douche, so he should be a leader. Uh, this last idea about assassination. Well, I think my partners provided adequate analysis. You know, there are other ways of dealing with this. Um, Nonviolence. More importantly, we'd say we don't support the killing of good dictators. We don't support the rise of bad guys. We think the Praetorian Guard is justified in killing Caligula or Nero or any number of crazy Roman Empire emperors, but like we don't like Richard III coming to the throne because he's crazy, right? And we don't like him killing lots of people because he's nuts. Uh, so what have I talked about today? Kind of an overblow. <coughs> I looked at what my partner said. I showed you why like the reputations we heard from opposition just weren't adequate. I look, looked over the points we heard uh, from side opposition. I showed you, you know, that the refutations my partner made still stand because we heard absolutely no response to them from the second opposition speaker. I think none of their case stands today. I think all of our material is still relevant and around. Thanks very much.
I mean, their entire economy as a society, as a species, is built on taking the meat from other people's kills, right? They're, they're like, by their own biology, kind of leeches on more successful animal societies, right? So I think that that makes it much more likely if there was any discrimination going on against hyenas, it was because of their actions and not because they're a different species, right? It was because the hyenas were, like, known to take the meat from the lionesses who were out getting it and, like, taking it away from them, right? And that hurt the economy of the lion. So I think there's, like, they gave us, they gave us no evidence that there was, like, an <coughs> unjustified discrimination against the, the hyenas because they're hyenas. We give you lots of evidence to suppose that the reason they were excluded was because of this, because they are scavengers and that damages the economy. I mean, it's a perfectly legitimate way to discriminate when you're running a lion society based on killing gazelles, right? Okay. So then, even if you buy that there's some sort of like, oh yeah, and then other minorities like were treated pretty good, right? Which would it gives us support to say that it's actually the behavior. In the scene, the symbol of seeing the I just can't wait to be king song, all these other animals are throwing him in the air and singing with him. And the song is not around to be like, you better do that, right? Like, they're doing this of their own volition just when Simba's there because they love the king um, and they love Simba. All right, moving on. So even if, it, if you buy this, um, was this the way? We gave you examples of, like, for example, like, uh, Gandhi's movement in India, or even the civil rights movement in the States, where, like, the most effective means were non-violent means, right? If we think that lions are rational and, like, kind of, like, <laughs> human at all, then that's going to be more responsive than sort of this, like, this, this idea of, like, killing their king and taking over, right? We see that, like, Scar and the hyenas didn't even try a more non-violent approach before they went straight to the jugular of killing the king, right? If they would have tried it and it hadn't worked, maybe they'd have a case, but they didn't, there's no case. Secondly, what's best for society? We gave you lots of reasons to say that this is actually like, much worse for society. We talked about the legitimacy of the rule as important in this sort of like pre technological civilization. I told you this like, damages the economy because the lionesses are now only giving food to the hyenas who don't want to do any work for themselves and they can't feed their own children. That's really bad. And we talked about the Scar's leadership, right? Like, like Murphy, tell, or Murphy, Murphy tells you uh, that the reason that the Scar stayed was because of like this ego thing. Of, like, he hated his brother so much, we see that early on in the film, that he wanted to stay private. It was a symbol of his defeating his brother. It was a symbol of his rule. Like Murphy, Murphy gave you reason to suppose that Mustafa actually would have moved the tribe, right? He would have recognized that his people are more important than a symbol. That makes a good ruler, and we're very proud to oppose. Thank you. Sorry, we're 
entire minority group is systematically discriminated against to the point where they ultimately are no longer allowed, like, no longer able to support themselves and die in huge numbers. It's not that Latinos aren't discriminated against. Well, they sure acted like they were discriminated against. But you're like, they seem pretty fucking pissed about something. I mean, it's because they feel they're being discriminated against. We see they are allowed to live with other creatures. Like to some degree, this is discrimination. Sure, hyenas are going to get some benefits in Scar's world because he helped them take control. But we think at the end of the day, Madam Speaker, this is still a superior society. Which is my last final question: Which place is actually better? They give you things like outside opposition, like Mufasa. Well, is economic so poor? And Madam Speaker, the only thing Scar did wrong was like, actually not have rain. Like, leaving the Prodlands wasn't a successful thing, it was just a bad season for Scar to be in. Like, what we would pause about as speaker is a society where all individuals are actually represented, in which all minorities actually have a place and are able to coexist with other ones, is a vastly superior society to one based on some, like, authoritarian theocracy, where an individual can control, based on monarchy, forever.